If your mansion house needs haunting, just call Rent a Ghost. We've got spooks and ghouls and freaks and fools at Rent a Ghost. Hear the phantom of the opera sing a haunting melody. Remember what you see is not a mystery, but Rent a Ghost. Tiny Timsey, now you are getting as mischievous as Mr. Clipper. Will you come here? <laughs> now I got you. Merrily, <laughs> <laughs> I am not to be sneezed at. <laughs> Darling, you are such a naughty. Now I want for you to make a spell of magic. Please be serious. Now look, here I have an ordinary Clapham Common or Garden piece of cloth. And you and I are going to cast a spell on it. Thank you. Oh, you are just like my beloved Mr. Claypool, you cute little footnhead. Oh, darling. Rolls, rolls, rolls. And we are expected to obey them all without question. This powder should be popular with gardeners and with people whose shoes are too tight. It makes things expand and grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Pixelated oh! 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 potions! Oh, quick, Mr. Claypool, sweep it all up before it expands the whole office. Oh, you sweep it up. I'm about to summon the lovely Susie Starlight for a conference. Oh. <laughs> I used to tour in a murder play, you see, and always got shot in the third act. Bang! Oh, um, oh, I trust you are still enjoying continued success in your starring role as the Perkins cleaning lady. Darling, I've had rave notices in the Ghost Gazette. Oh! And the Daily Haunter. Oh! Susie Starlight's cleaning lady is a triumph from the moment she makes her sweeping entrance. Oh, very <laughs> Susie Starlight's beautifully understated dishwashing will tug at your heartstrings. Oh. Susie Starlight. <gasps> well, I could go on forever. And no doubt would, with any encouragement. <laughs> Uh, well, we are not encouraged to use our initiative, and me thinks this state of affairs should change. Therefore, I have a motion to propose to you all. Oh. Ah, Miss Popoff, I am glad you are here. I wish to make a proposal. Oh, darling, I thought you would never ask. Of course I accept. Oh. <laughs> then will we be married? Uh, no, you do not understand. I wish to make a proposal to all of you. But you cannot marry all three of us. That would be big of you. Big, big on me. me. That's what I say. Miss Popov, I am trying to discuss a motion. Oh, I am filled with this. Filled with what? Emotions, the emotion of love. But I do not wish to be married in triplicates. Oh, you daft Slavonic spook. He's trying to propose that we ghosts should be given more initiative. Oh. Mind you, when we put it to the makers, they're liable to get very annoyed and give us a push. <gasps> then we must push them back. Oh. Well, I wish you'd stop oh. complaining. Everybody has to take their pets for walkies. Not when the pets in the cloth castles are a walking flamethrower. They insisted on following us everywhere, <laughs> even when I bought the roast beef at the butcher's. Oh. But our butcher doesn't sell roast meat. Huh? He does since Bernie went in there. <laughs> <laughs> and why aren't you spooks working? Because we want more freedom of action. Yes. We insist that henceforth we be allowed more initiative in the use of magic. See, see. Here, here. Well, by the look of all those potions, you've already started using it. All right, show me some of these inventions. Ah, oh, well, now, Tiny Timothy and I have invented this magic garment. If Dropin would be a model, I will demonstrate. Oh. This is an all porpoise garment that will change itself to suit any occasion. One day, it can be a fashionable gig. Ah. <laughs> 
also say it can be an evening gown. Oh, a pretty horse is just like a melody. No doubt Miss Popoff has heard the old saying, hair today and gown tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see what my audience thinks of Miss Popoff's invention. Oh, dear, it must be the interval. Well, we don't need your audience, thank you very much, but I think that's a very good invention, Miss Popoff. Yes, now, what's next? Allow me to present my latest invention. This is for people who are getting thin on top, and there's a lot of them about. Not only does this portion stop their hair falling out... Oh, but they do not need potions to stop their hair falling out. All they need to do is tie knots on the inside. <laughs> be quiet. Shame on you laughing at a joke like that. Oh. Should have more respect for old age. Well, <laughs> as I was saying, not only does this portion stop hair falling out, but it also makes it grow faster. Mr. Meeker, allow me to demonstrate. Mr. Meeker, <laughs> hair today and going today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you can't control your flames, I'll have you extinguished. Oh. And as for that potion, it's far too strong. But which? Yes. Muck antidote. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, oh, Mac Dunn. Oh, Mac, thank you. Now, Ethel and I have got a lot of work to do, so if you've got any more inventions to show us, make it quick. Oh, quick, it shall be. Behold, the clay pole self-propelled bed. Oh. Yeah. Just imagine, you have a very early morning appointment, but you are too tired or too lazy to get up. Watch <laughs> it. Make a wish, and this bed will transport you to your place of destination. Yeah, I've heard of travelling by sleeper, but that's ridiculous. Oh, you won't think this is ridiculous. This portion will be a great boon to entertainers and impressionists. One squirt. Squirt? Yes, indeed, one squirt. And they can assume the voice and the bodily appearance of any other person. Oh, but supposing they can't change back to themselves again? No. That's too risky to sell to anyone. <laughs> and so is this self-propelled bed. But I am prepared to market Miss Popoff's all-purpose garment. Creep. Creep. Providing I'll get 70% of the profit. Mr Meeker's a very shrewd businessman. He might not know much about magic, but when it comes to money, you've got to hand it to oh, him. Oh, well, if you don't, he'll take it anyway. <laughs> well, we're going home. Come on, you two. Oh, oh, oh you step. clumsy nag. Oh, you made me pull a muscle. Oh, no. Oh, bitterly tragic. That poor, poor woman. She's been struck down in the prime of her woman. Oh, cruel, oh. cruel fate to treat her thus. Now she lies there suffering. And the sight is more than I can bear. Open my handbag, will you, sweetie? Thanks for the sympathy. Ooh. Oh, never mind, Ethel. A little massage will put that right. Well, I got a fresh bottle this morning. A fresh bottle of what? Rubbing alcohol. I always use it after my keep fit exercises. Quiet! <laughs> <laughs> Go back to work, you spooks, and invent something useful this time. Oh, come on, Mr. Claypole. Just up there. Oh, 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 First, the makers agree that we should show more initiative, then they discourage us by rejecting my inventions. And mine? Mm. McWitch, me mm. thinks we should change their minds by proving how well our inventions work. Yes! Uh, starting with my self-propelled bed. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, open the door, Harold. That rubbing alcohol doesn't half punk. She's gone right out the back door. And at a considerable speed, something tells me she's going to need a fairy godmother very soon. Ethel is in mortal danger, but to danger I'm no stranger. I'll stand firm and never waver. Rest assured that I shall save her.
turned off to the left. You know, I could have sworn that that woman on the bed looked like Mrs. Mika. Well, yes, but what on earth was she doing in a bed in the street? Heaven knows. Perhaps her doctor told her to get more rest and more fresh air. <laughs> even your nuttiness this time. I have heard of sleepwalking, but never sleep driving. Ooh. Oh, now I've sprained my other leg. Oh, how am I going to get home? Well, why not just hail a passing armchair? Oh, come along, Arthur. You have not heard the last of this. Ooh. I knew you'd need a fairy godmother. I shall transport you home straight away. No, thank you. I've had enough spooky charts boarding for one day. I can walk home if you take the weight of my bad leg. It, you hold on to me and I'll hold your wand. Oh, just careful with the wand, sweetie. It's loaded. That's all right. Here we go. Oh, that's it. Oh, no! Oh, if that police constable sees you in your fairy godmother outfit, he'll throw us into the loony bin. You better make yourself invisible. Quick! <laughs> On your way to a fairies convention, are you? Would you mind telling me why you're walking in that strange manner? I just had a bit of an accident. An accident? Well, it was rather scary. The steering on my bed failed. What? Uh, and then I crashed into the lamppost. Okay. Your behaviour is very strange, madam. Ooh. And I shall have to report it. You don't look very comfortable, sweetie. Would you feel better if I put my arm around your waist? No, I would not. Your name, please. Ethel Mika. And I wish I hadn't got out of bed this morning. No! <laughs> again. We've just got back from the office. Now get downstairs and start breathing fire into that boiler. Oh, dear, who'd be a pet owner? Ah, oh, Ethel, oh. thank goodness you got home. Oh, Harold, I need a bit of comfort. Put your arm oh, round my arm. Uh, yeah, what's happened to Susie Starla? Well, she's gone back to the Perkins. Oh. And if she hadn't used her wand to make my leg better, I'd still be hobbling her! Oh, oh, oh Apple, uh, Apple, uh, Apple, uh, Apple, 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 It's no use arguing, Miss Popoff. Mr. Claypool has proved to the Meekers that his invention works. Now, I shall prove that mine works too. But you cannot be sure that yours will work. <laughs> there is many a cup between the lip and the slip. Do not hatch your chickens before they are counted. Yes, well, you better get that mm -hmm. one back to Susie Starlight. I'll just give the Meekers one quick squirt. Huh? And after mm -hmm. that, they will automatically assume the voices and the bodily appearances of the first Persons they mention. <laughs> the mind pickles. Yes. Oh, well, that Susie's one taken yeah, care of. We'll just pop up to the bar for him for a second, level. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yes. Ethel? I've just seen the spooks. Ah! Ethel? Ethel, they've changed your appearance. They've changed yours, too. Ah! Oh. Just like you, it's horrible. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Oh, well, it's all right for you. I'm all fat and flabby while you're slim and beautiful. Well, uh... what's to complain about? You're a very handsome woman. Oh, do you Especially think? Especially with that moustache. Oh, 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 it's terrible. It feels as if I've got a scrubbing brush under my nose. Yeah, <laughs> and I've got lipstick on. <laughs> oh, God. I wonder men wear trousers. The last time I saw legs like that, they were supporting a grand piano. Here, Harold, who are you telephoning? The spooks. Drat. The line's engaged. Well, never mind. I shall just do a little light dusting. No, no, Miss Pop, I'll leave it off the hook. My appearance changing potion will wear off in due course, but I don't want the Meekers to ring me for an antidote until they have seen how well it works. <laughs> And I know it will work a treat, if it works. After all, McWidge, your magic inventions are just not as efficient as mine. You think <laughs> not, eh? Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, well, I 
won't argue with you. Oh, come on, my lad. Let's get back to work, OK? Oh. Work, work, work. That is all I ever do, all day long. I work like a dog. <laughs> you see, Fido Clay Cole, huh? my pushing does work. Now, you shouldn't have been so dogmatic, should you? Oh, never mind. Don't worry, my darling. I have the antidote right here. And you'll be back to normal before you can say Jack Russell. <laughs> <laughs> One more second, McWitch, and I would have bitten your wee Scottish ankle. I do not think your antidote has worked completely. He is still half dog. <laughs> Egad, I am relieved to be my abnormal self again. I did not enjoy being a dog. <laughs> I fail to see what is so funny. Pray tell, what has happened to cause such hilarity? Aha, uh -huh. thereby hangs a tail. <laughs> Your foolish mirth is most irritating. That's <laughs> 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 oh, I appear to have retained some doggy instincts. Oh, oh, I'm afraid that is not all you have retained, Mr. Claypool. <laughs> Look behind you. <laughs> 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 result of your incompetence, you bungling McWitch! Be careful, McWitch, he may bite you! No, no, he won't! Ow! 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 McWitch! Release my tail at once! Oh, no. <laughs> oh for heaven's sake, stop crying! You will shriek the wall! Oh, I need a little comfort. Oh, come on, Harold. Put your arm around me, dear. No, I oh, feel silly. You beast! Just because I look like you, you don't love me anymore. <laughs> Does Mrs. Ethel Meeker live here? Yes, she's my wife. Oh. oh. Well, I gather Mrs. Meeker was involved in some sort of driving accident this morning. The constable who made the report had returned to the station wearing a big red nose and a clown hat. We put him on sick leave. The trouble is, I can't make head nor tail of his notes. So I'd just like to clarify a few points with your wife. Well, uh, could you come back later? My wife's uh, not herself today. Oh, I'd rather settle this thing now, sir. It'll only take a few moments. Walk this way. Neville, there's a police sergeant to see you. Oh, uh, good afternoon, sergeant. You're Mrs. Ethel Meeker? Yes, that's right. Uh, would you like a seat? Oh, thank you. Well, what is it we could do for you? No! Oh. Oh. Well, it's about your accident. Oh, yes. I gather you said to the constable that your steering failed, but he gives no details of what sort of vehicle you were driving. Oh, well, it was a vintage iron bed. Oh, very funny. There's something burning downstairs. Which way is your cellar? Uh, oh, it's through the hall. Good officer, there's no need to... Oh! Eat. Don't go into the cellar! Oh, you great nana! None of this would have happened if you made those spooks obey orders! Don't you shout at me, oh, Omega! You... I'm fed up with you blaming me for everything! No, I don't if blame you! Carry out kittens in this house, I'll get the blame! Well. No wonder they're doing a revival of the white horse head. Suppose I have had enough. For four years we put up with the Meeker's noise, and today was the last straw. The time has come to have it up with them once and for all. We're going to go over there. We're going to lay down the line and tell them what's what. Oh, you're absolutely right, Arthur. We've been too weak all along. The time has come for us to stand up and be counted. <laughs> We'll lay down the line and tell them what's what. The Mickers will be quite astounded. But whether the poor dears like it or not, the Perkins will stand and be counted. <laughs> I'm sorry the boiler backfired, Sergeant. <laughs> it's lucky you weren't hurt. Excuse me, but it's your face. 
I could have sworn it was different last time I saw you. Oh, I expect you're a bit confused. After all, you've had a close shave. And so have you, by the looks of things. <laughs> oh. That's a table, that's a chair, that's a door. That's a lamp, that's a sideboard, and that's a washed-up policeman. Can you count? Yes. How many of us are there? Two. Quite correct, thank you. And I can count too. And it seems to me there are four very strange people here. I shall continue my investigations later. Oh! Here are the ingredients that you wanted, Macvitch. Oh, thank you, Miss Popoff. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Be patient, darling. McVitch is making for you an anecdote so it will make you completely subnormal. Oh, a fire alive, my feet would be killing me. Oh. Slip, boy. Fetch! <laughs> oh. oh, good boy. Thank you. Those are the last things I will fetch for you, McVitch. I am not your pet, so kindly let me sit in peace. <laughs> Oh? <laughs> I don't think he can say sausages. Oh, sausages. <laughs> Very well, since you persist in baiting me, you shall discover that my bite is worse than my... <laughs> oh, is there something I'm trying to remember? Stop it, you rags! Tell us a prompt in a man! That's it! Pretty that's things. it! We, we were going to tell the Meekers exactly what we thought of them. Somehow we got sidetracked. Right, let's go and get it over with. Aren't you coming? Oh, I suppose so, but I'm getting awfully bored with this verbal brawling with the Meekers. People in the 18th century were elegant and civilised. Oh, I wish we could all be like that. as clothes and elegant ways they'll behave as folk did in the old-fashioned days <laughs> you stupid now, lad will you do as you're told yes. and get back this into the city oh, oh yeah, now for yeah. heaven's sake who oh, is that? that oh it's the oh, oh, oh mr perkins oh, 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 why do you keep bothering us all at all Except our humble apologies for disturbing you and your charmless wife, sir. But hearts my life. <laughs> I hope you won't take it amiss if we aver that, in our opinion, you're a pair of half-witted nutters. <laughs> oh, lad, Sir Arthur, I congratulate you on your frankness. And may I say that we both hold you in the same low esteem. <laughs> Indeed, we regard you with the greatest uh, disrespect. And I say that with all due sincerity. <laughs> your sincerity may be due, but it has not yet arrived. <laughs> Since yours has long departed, <laughs> are you saying that I am a two-faced? Oh, perish the thought. If you were two-faced, you would not wear the one you've got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, madam, it has been a pleasure to be insulted by you. And would you care to join Lady Heffel and me in a stately mesure? <laughs> Rather unusual uh, incidences in the house next door. I wonder if you've observed any of the occupants behaving in a strange or suspicious manner. Oh no, love. They all behave just as normally as everyone else does around here.
Twenty ghosts Hear the phantom of the opera Sing a haunting melody Remember what you see is not mystery But rent a ghost At your party be a smarty and higher Rent a ghost If you want a fight, climb the spooky heights With rent a ghost You can let our spirits move you And for fun play ghost men's knock Because we get into shock, we hope your knees will lock that rent a ghost. Let me see the most amazing ghost that's in to the many supernatural ghouls of the day. The step in your attic means a spectre telepathic is descending, just to spirit you away. Hey! We are extraordinary fellas here at rent a ghost. To be enough that you'll regret I come to rent a ghost. For if I love good things, we go to rock. I'm not forgetting a ghost script An apparition crypt from deep inside a crypt Ring rent a ghost An apparition crypt from deep inside a crypt Ring rent a ghost